Hi guys, welcome to Thermomix Facebook Live. My name is Shamsida and I was a finalist in the MasterChef Singapore back in 2018. Now, I am a Thermomix user. I love this machine so much. Um, I, I just gave birth back in February and it's really certainly helped me a lot when you know I'm dealing with a newborn but I still need to go on with my everyday life. I, I cannot not bake or cook, you know, even with a baby around. So this machine is quite a lifesaver. Now, before we start, can you guys please like and share this video, okay? And then share it with your friends. Even if your friends are late to watching this, you guys can always just replay back and refer to the recipe that we're using today. And today, we're making my very most favorite cinnamon rolls. Now, this recipe, you will get a very soft and fluffy and pillowy kind of cinnamon rolls. And it's not so heavy on, on the taste either. And it's a perfect dish for you to share with your family, especially since Hari Raya Haji is coming. Okay, so let's get started and we're going to be using plain flour today instead of bread flour. Now, using plain flour instead of bread flour, you'll get an easier dough to work with. Um, basically, plain flour and bread flour is quite interchangeable. You can use it one for the other, but when you're making bread, um, you might have to use a little bit more of the plain flour. Okay, so I've got some about 322 grams of plain flour over here now especially since you know since the whole covid situation and with you know circuit breaker there's been a mm, out of stock bit of flour has been out of stock for the longest time <laughs> so just use plain flour okay and i've got some butter over here okay you can refer to the description for the exact amount okay now this recipe is quite counterintuitive usually you add um butter to the end right before you don't you don't add butter right at the start but when you are doing this when you are adding butter right at the start you are helping to make the dough softer a bit more fluffy and it's kind of like making pastry also you know when you add when you make the flour and the butter and then you just make it into like bread crumbs like that okay so what we're going to do is we're going to turbo this And we're going to turbo for two seconds. I'm going to do it twice. Okay, one more time. All right. And we're going to set it aside. Okay. All right. So now we've got the flour and the butter all nice. Okay. You can't even see that there's butter in there. And that's the whole point. So that later, when you add this flour and butter mixture into the milk into the wet ingredients everything will get incorporated pretty quickly and easily okay okay and then you're gonna use the same mixing bowl you don't have to tie yourself out and wash this out nope it's okay it's alright if there's some remnants of flour and butter, just leave it, it'll get mixed up everything together. Anyways, now we're going to add the milk, okay? And we are going to warm this up a little bit. Because instead of um, preparing the yeast at the start, you know, when you add make a spoolie and you add warm water to the yeast, we're just going to add everything together so it speeds up our process and also, you know, it just make it easier because you don't want an additional step. Okay, we're going to set it for three minutes. Okay, 55 degrees. You don't want it to be too hot. Otherwise, you'll kill the yeast. Okay, and just feed one. All right. Okay, while you guys are still watching this, remember to like and share this video. And then you can save this video and watch it again when you're making these cinnamon rolls. The recipe will be given in the description box above. So yeah, um, and what I really do love about Thermomix is that there's no open flame. And right now with a newborn, it's kind of difficult for me to like, you know, tend to the stove. So the, the, the Thermomix really helps me a lot when I'm cooking or when I'm baking. And you know, the timer will just go off. And then if I'm not using it, it'll just automatically turn off. And that's a safety feature that I really like um, because 
sometimes the baby will just you know keep me in the room for up to hours so i can't do much when he's very clingy <laughs> okay so we're just waiting for the milk to be warmed up and then after that we're going to add the rest of the ingredients for the for the dough which is the eggs the yeast sugar the salt we'll add it right after we mix the flour okay so we'll add the salt right at the end okay so salt still the same pretty much the same when you're making bread you add it only at the end it's just that the butter and, and the flour has already been um well incorporated over here okay so like i said just now it kind of looks just the same you know, it doesn't look like, it's just a sandy mixture, okay? Your flour is a little bit more sandy than normal. Alright, and one more thing about the filling. Instead of just using cinnamon powder, I like to add a little bit of rumpa cake lapis. Um, you can just go to your nearest baking shop and you can find rumpa cake lapis. Otherwise, a little bit of nutmeg would do the trick. Okay, so this will help to cut the harshness of the cinnamon flavour inside your cinnamon rolls, okay? And of course, this cinnamon roll has a cream cheese glaze, okay? You could make it just like that, but I think the cream cheese glaze makes it a little bit more um, luxurious and delicious, I suppose. <laughs> okay, and this thing is almost done. Just letting it cool down. Okay. So at 55 degrees, you won't see the red light over here. So it's still pretty cool to touch all right it, the milk is not so warm but to be safe if you want to reduce the temperature of the milk so you don't kill the yeast you add the eggs okay don't worry the eggs are not going to be cooked <laughs> it's still too cold okay and then you add the sugar and now you can add the yeast okay and we're just going to blend this up okay just for 10 seconds and speed 5.5 all right okay and now we're gonna be using my favorite function which is the dough function okay I'm just gonna scrape off the extra Whatever you have over here, just make sure that all the yeast and all the sugar which splattered to the cover is being used. Okay. Okay. So now I'm gonna add the flour. comes my favorite function and we're just gonna knead this we're just using the dough function for four minutes okay so remember again to like and share this video <laughs> I'm gonna be doing this quite a lot throughout the video okay guys so you guys please like and share the video all right um, now, once again, this recipe, it calls for plain flour. Now, if you do want to use bread flour, if you accidentally bought too many bread flour, you know, too much bread flour since it's now on, you know, in stock everywhere, <laughs> you guys can just reduce the amount of flour or, you know, just experiment. I mean, the dough function does justice to your dough pretty well. But if you feel like it's either too soft or too you know if it's too soft you can just add a little bit of more flour you know but if it's too hard just don't do anything else okay just you know just relax and let it rest and i'm pretty sure it will soften up after it has proofed for one hour okay so since we're using commercial yeast over here we're going to be proofing the dough twice after this i'm going to let the dough rest for one hour and then after that we'll shape it uh, but in the meantime we'll make the filling okay so for the filling we have brown sugar um, this is just plain brown sugar okay you guys could add a little bit of dark brown sugar so when I do it um, at home I like to half using dark brown sugar and half of brown sugar so you kind of get like a little bit um, there's 
different levels of sweetness, I suppose. Okay, and like I said about the the cinnamon, uh, the cinnamon powder, just add a bit of tinge, a tinge of nutmeg powder or kick lapis powder. Okay, if you don't have any of that, just add cinnamon powder. Okay, it doesn't matter. Now baking, my recipes are always just a guide. You guys can make it yours. Do your magic, okay, and share on Facebook and Instagram. Tag me, tag Thermomix, you know, and we would love to see your creations using the recipes that's online right now, okay, because of COVID, we've got a lot of videos for you guys. So if you do make any of the recipes that we have been um, showing on our Facebook pages, please do share with us, okay? Remember to like and share. Now we've got another two minutes or so on this. All right, and in the meantime, uh, I'll just prep aside a bowl. Okay, I'm just gonna be using this bowl again. Now you want to prepare another bowl for the dough to proof. Okay. So we'll just use this one. And you wanna stand by a little bit more flour. Because this dough is actually pretty soft. So when you have a soft dough, that gives you room for you to add a bit more flour, you know, dust a bit more flour, so that, you know, it becomes more manageable, it's easier for you to uh, handle it. But uh, it's always important to add lesser flour first, you know, and then you add on to it rather than the reverse because it's a lot tougher for you to add water or milk into the dough rather than flour okay so if it's still sticky leave it let it rest the gluten will form and it will come together eventually all right so i'm just preparing this first i'm gonna add salt after this Okay, so we can just leave the dough function on because we're gonna be using it again. Okay, I'll just show you guys how the dough looks like right now. Okay, so this is how the dough looks like. You know, it will come off together. It will come off the bowl once everything is mixed together. I'm just gonna scrape down any remnants of flour or whatever that's here on the sides of the bowl. And then I'm gonna add the salt. And we're gonna knead this again for three minutes. Okay, three minutes. Okay. So this is my typical um, setting when I'm making dough. Before I add the butter and salt, it's a four minute knead. And then after I add the butter and salt, it's a three minute knead. And I'm done with making the dough within like less than 10 minutes, okay? So once again, remember to like and share this video. Okay. I'm just prepping the countertop space for me to shape the dough into a ball. Okay, we're not rolling it out immediately. We're gonna let it go for first proofing and then we'll make the filling and then we will roll and shape the um, cinnamon rolls and then we're gonna proof it again for another hour. So this is a two-step proof. Okay, the first proofing is done after this. Okay, we have prima flour over here. Once again, just use plain flour. You know, the thing about baking is um, some recipes, you know, they call for ingredients that you don't usually stock in your pantry. Now, the beauty of cooking and baking is that you can alter it to your liking, okay? You don't have to follow the recipes to a T. Although you do, when it comes to baking, you have to follow recipes by the amount lah. Okay, you have to use the same amount, otherwise it might be disastrous. Or you can, you know, give yourself a bit of leeway, plus minus two, three grams. Don't worry about it. And that's another thing about the Thermomix 6 that I love. It comes, the accuracy of the scale comes down to one, set, one uh, gram. So that's really useful if you're making pastries, or making whatever, you know that needs like, I don't know, 322 grams of flour, like my recipe over here. <laughs> okay. So you want to fly your hands as well. And also, we're just going to knead it a little bit by hand once it comes together. Okay. 
just so that you know give a little bit of extra love and for you to feel the dough <laughs> i've been watching a lot of baking and cooking um, videos online it's because of the circuit breaker and you know a lot of the chefs you know to tell you to a lot of the bakers they tell you oh, you need to feel the dough you need to make sure you know whether the food is ready, whether the dough is ready, whether everything else is ready, okay? And I think it's quite true. You gotta make sure that whatever you're making calls out to you. And you know, if it goes with your intuition, then stop. If your intuition says, if your gut says, okay, I think you need to stop kneading, then stop kneading. If it says, I need to knead it more, just knead it more, okay? Well, it should be done soon. All right. So now, ah, beautiful. So that's how the dough looks like right now. Now we're just gonna tip it over. I'm gonna take it off from the. Okay, I just let the let the dough come down. Just tip the bowl out, and everything will come out. And then you can start scraping out everything else. Okay. Now remember to like and share this video guys and you can save the video so you can watch it again when you're making it okay unless you have a crying baby at home then uh, i cannot help you with that <laughs> now there has been times where i have my hands stuck in dough and then my baby starts crying and i'll just have to talk to him you know and sometimes it does get startled you know by the sounds of the machine and i just have to like talk to him and you gotta get used to these sounds baby who's gonna be cooking a lot more <laughs> and you know i always assure him that hey you're gonna be eating all this you know so if you want to eat all this yummy food you gotta deal with the noises <laughs> just get it out so we just want to knead it a little bit okay just get it oh it's a very very soft dough right now You see, it comes together eventually. Okay, so you want to get the bits of scrapes of dough on the countertop. Okay. All right. Now, okay. So we're done. I'm just gonna tuck it in nicely. Right, tuck everything nicely it's still a little bit sticky a little bit tacky but it's okay as long as it comes off your hands it will once it's rested it will come together nicely okay and we will let this proof for one hour okay we'll see how it looks like right now it's it doesn't stick to your finger to the touch and that's what you want and it's very very soft so we're gonna let it rest for one hour for it to proof and for the gluten to form. In the meantime, while waiting for the dough to rest, we're gonna make the filling, okay? Now I've got some butter over here. Now it's important that your butter is at room temperature so that it's spreadable, okay? Because you don't want to tear your, your dough when you, when you roll it out and you spread the butter on it later, okay? So I've got room temperature butter and then I've got my dark brown sugar and my brown sugar as well as my cinnamon, okay? Um, cinnamon with like you know a dash of cake lapis um, spice like I said again you can just add a little bit of nutmeg for you to cut through the cinnamon okay so we're gonna add this into the machine okay and we're gonna turbo it turbo it <laughs> we're gonna turbo this mixture for two seconds and then we're done, okay? Now, I didn't wash the previous bowl. I just used another bowl, okay? And just be careful, you don't want to get the spice into your face, otherwise, you'll be sneezing. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna pour this out. Okay. Okay, and since this is a dry mixture and the bowl is pretty dry, you just got a little bit of dark brown sugar left. I'm just gonna leave it, I'm just gonna use it later. Okay, now we're gonna roll out 
the dough that we have rested. Of course, we've already magicked it for you. <laughs> we've got another bowl over here for you, another bowl of dough, which has been proofing nicely, okay? And we're gonna roll it out. Just, you know, make sure you have enough flour around here. And this is where you really wanna get your hands dirty, okay guys? You've got to get your hands dirty for this. Just gonna tip it out. Okay. Now we're just gonna punch out the air. Uh, we're not gonna need it anymore, but we're just gonna make sure that. There's enough flour because we don't want any flour sticking to the rolling pin, okay guys? Okay. Let's flatten it a little bit and then roll it out. So you want it to be, you want the length to be about twice the size of the width. Um, you know, again with me, I'm very, very flexible with the dimensions or whatever. Okay, so you just want to make sure you get a nice, beautiful rectangle. Now, when you're rolling it out, you are already um, punching out the air. So, don't worry. If there's any big bubbles, you know, just squeeze it and, yeah, just let it, just burst those bubbles and then your dough will be nice and even. Now, we don't want it too thin, okay, because it is cinnamon rolls after all. Okay, you want a nice, big, fat dough. Okay, so I've got a nice rectangle-ish shape over here. Oh, this too. Okay. Okay. Just trying to make it as rectangle as I can. <laughs> okay. Alright. A little bit hang it, but never mind. <laughs> now I'm gonna get before I spread the rest of the butter. I'm going to take a little bit, okay, and I'm using a, I don't know, I think this is 8 inch, a spring foam pan. You can use whatever pan, whatever, you know, if you have a casserole dish, uh, a round Pyrex, or whatever it is, it doesn't matter, okay. Just butter it up along the sides, okay, at the base and the sides, so that when you, when, when the rolls, Poof, and when you bake it in the oven, it won't stick. Okay, so we're just gonna set this aside first. And now we're gonna get our hands dirty and, you know, just break the butter up and put it everywhere. And then we'll get a knife or a spatula after this to spread the butter even better. Okay? Now, when I'm baking or when I'm cooking, I try to have one hand clean, but when I do roll this dough out in a while, I can't have the other hand clean. So, I'll just keep my left hand clean for now, and then when I need it, I will use it. <laughs> it's a little bit tough, I know that. <laughs> you would want to get both hands dirty, okay? And then I'll just spread it out. Okay. Now remember to like and share this video, guys. Share it with your friends. You know, if any of your friends are thinking of getting a Thermomix, getting a machine, I think this will convince them. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I always get a sense of satisfaction when I make baked goods on my own instead of buying. I think there's just that, you know, homey taste to it, I suppose. So we're done spreading the butter nicely, evenly everywhere. Now, you're gonna get the rest. You're gonna get, you're gonna use most of this 
filling you know and just spread it nicely and evenly all around it might seem a lot but it's actually not that much <laughs> once you spread everything onto the dough okay you want to be generous with this And try to spread out right to the end so that um, all of the rolls get the beautiful taste of cinnamon and nutmeg and the brown sugar. Okay. And then gently, slowly, just bring up the dough. Okay, you want to make sure that it's tight. So you go from right to left, left to right. Then right to left again, and then left to right, okay? So that everything gets rolled up nicely and evenly. Okay. So if you can see, I didn't roll it out so thinly. So that's why it's uh, very easy for me to manage. And I think this dough is quite forgiving. So why don't I roll from top to bottom? Don't make your life difficult. <laughs> I'm here to help you make your life easier. Okay. Roll it up. Okay, and once we get to the end, you just want to pinch. Okay, pinch it, pinch it, pinch it. So that it doesn't get... It doesn't... Um, roll out when it proves okay and this is where you just gonna get some flour where you cut it okay so you want to cut it into 12 equal pieces so that's two okay and then it's four so then each quarter gets cut into thirds Okay, and we've got our tin nice and but buttered already. Okay, so I'll just take the smallest one first, and uh, let's just go to the sides. Okay. Arrange it nicely. Don't worry if there's space in between. The dough will proof and everything will come together. Okay? And it's alright if some of the sugars come out. Doesn't matter as long as it tastes yummy. Okay? Three more over here. Beautiful. And we're done. Okay, so we're gonna let this proof for another hour or so. I'm just gonna cheat. I have a preheated oven and I'm gonna turn it off. I'm just gonna chuck this in uh, so that you know the warm environment doubles it up in half the amount of time. So this goes into the oven at 180 degrees for about 20 minutes. So now we have the buns in the oven and it's baking nice and you know hot in the oven right now. I'm just gonna make the cream cheese glaze and it's the easiest glaze ever. You don't even have to heat it up. I'm gonna add the cream cheese. <laughs> Again, cream cheese is something that's out of stock right now. I have no idea why. Okay, so we've got the sugar and the cream cheese and we've got some milk over here. Okay, again, the ingredients and all will be in the, in the description box. So you can just refer it to there. And vanilla bean paste. 
or you can use vanilla um, extract up to you vanilla bean pods whatever you have okay you don't have to use exactly what i am using as long as it's vanilla <laughs> okay hang on all right so we're just gonna turbo this maybe like three times okay two seconds Okay, and then we're gonna scrape it down. There you go. Okay. We've got a nice everything's coming together. It's just that the cream cheese is still a little bit um, too hard because you want it to be um, a like a thick sauce, okay? everything down and then okay let me just show you guys how it looks like right now you can see that the milk and the cheese is still separated and you don't want that you want them to come together so we're gonna turbo this one more time at least probably another two more times one last turbo Glaze. Pretty much we're done with the cinnamon rolls. Okay, we just need to scrape everything down and get everything out of the bowl. A little bit more from the dough, from the bowl. All right. And that will go on nicely onto your cinnamon rolls. So our cinnamon rolls are done and this is the one that I prepared beforehand for our life over here. And I just put it in the oven at 180 degrees for about 50 to 20 minutes until it's a nice, beautiful golden brown colour. And now we're going to glaze it with the cream cheese, frosting cream cheese glaze. Okay, so I've already run the knife through the sides of the pan, okay. And I'm going to just gonna take this out. Look at that. This looks really beautiful. I'm going to try and put this onto the cake stand. Okay, I've oiled it nicely, so it should come off nicely. Oh yes. Do you hear that beautiful crackling? It's all the sugar. <laughs> Alright, and one, two, and yeah. We're gonna put the messy bits out of the camera first. <laughs> now I've got the cream cheese glaze ready over here. Okay, give it a quick mix. And we're just gonna slather everything on top of the cinnamon rolls. And then we can Spread it out nicely. You can pipe it out if you want to, but you know, it doesn't, it, it's not, it's, it's always lovely to go a little bit rustic with a mix. <laughs> it doesn't have to look perfect all the time. Okay, we're just gonna make sure that we used every little bit of this yummy, yummy cream cheese glaze. And there we have it. Your cinnamon rolls with vanilla cream cheese glaze. You're done. Now remember to save some for your guests, otherwise you'll end up finishing the entire tray to yourself. <laughs> now remember to like and share this video and you can always watch it again, play back again if you are trying this recipe at home. 
the, the ingredients and the recipe is in the description box and also remember to like and share this video once again the thermomix is an amazing machine for you to have at home especially if you make a lot of bread a lot of baking goods you know and even if you are an advanced cook or a noob cook you know the tm6 is a great machine for you to have in your kitchen because it will speed up everything really quickly i'm just gonna enjoy this i'm not gonna save for anyone see you guys soon